In this short video, I want to explain to you how to understand the subsurface scattering parameters inside the principal BSDF. Because many people confuse it and think that these two parameters are like some kind of dark magic that work together. And it's not that the case. It's not the case. So for subsurface scattering, we have three parameters. The first one is the subsurface value. And this is a multiplier that will mix the diffuse part of the shader with the subsurface part of the shader. So if we go uh, to, render, to render mode, we will see that if I put this to one, I can see the full effect of the subsurface scattering as it's configured right now. If I put this to 0 0.5, I can see like the half of the effect of the subsurface scattering as it's configured right now. The next parameter is the subsurface radius is the distance that the light will travel inside the object. So we have three components, that is X, Y, and Z, and depending on the component, one part of the light will travel farther or less into the, into the object. We have three components because in cycles, we have three components on the light, red, green, and blue. For example, if I put here zero and I go subsurface scattering one, you can see there is no effect at all. If I put here, 0.5, this is the distance that the light will travel inside the object, but just the red component of the light. If I do the same, but with all the components, the light that will travel will be white. I'm allowing all the light to travel along the object. If I decide to put this to zero, and for example, I decide to put this to 0.5, only red light will travel along the object. So. This is the distance the light will travel. If I go increasing slowly, you can see how the light is traveling more, 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 more up to one point where the travel is to the other side. This is just the distance and what component of the light is going to travel along the object. So if I put this to 0.5 and I multiply this to 0.5, what I'm going to do is to uh, cut in half the effect, the distance the light will travel. but I still can increase this and I still will get the uh, subsurface scattering effect. But it's not the same as using this, for example, I'm putting this to uh, 6 and this to 0 0.5. It's not the same because uh, we are effectively multiplying less subsurface scattering with the diffuse component of the shader. So the results are going to be very different. Keep in mind that this is the distance the light will travel. So for example, uh, for having a, a red subsurface effect, I can multiply this in 0.7, and this will be more like a skinny tone, like a bloody tone. Finally, we have the subsurface color, and the subsurface color is affected by the distance the, travel, uh, the light will travel, obviously, because different components will uh, travel different distances. But in general, if I go here and I put the red effect, then you can see the effect over the, the, the rest of the surface. Okay, it's more like it's affecting all the surface. Well, if I put a white color here, saturation value to one, and I put this to 0 0.5, you can see how this is just affecting the light traveling inside the object, but not the rest of the surface. So in general, you want to reach an equilibrium between the subsurface radius and the subsurface color. And later you can modulate the effect of the subsurface scattering using the subsurface multiplier. But the subsurface multiplier is just that, it's a multiplier. It has nothing to do with the subsurface radius and the subsurface color. So for example, if I want to reach some kind of a skinny tone, I can go here, let's reduce this. The albedo, remember the albedo has to be always below 0 0.8. Now that's okay. okay. And now we can add uh, a bit of red subsurface. Let's add a bit of uh, a bit more components. A bit of, of green, a bit of green, and a bit of blue. And let's increase the subsurface multiplier. And you can see how we can get like a skinny effect, a skin effect. And now we can start increasing the red component. And after that, I'm going to modulate the effect with the other two components, and then I can reduce the effect. So I, in the end, get this color that was the color that I, I wanted in the first place, 
I can get this color, but at the, at the same time, I can get the softening effect of the subsurface scattering, and I can get the light traverse in the object. We can increase even this if we want, etc. So we can do one last test that will be to put a point light here. So we can see the light from the backside. Okay. I hope with this you understand how the subsurface scattering works inside the principal VSDF. Don't forget that the principal VSDF is an artist driven shader. So the subsurface multiplier is an artistic multiplier. The physical effects in the subsurface scattering are the subsurface radius and the subsurface color, which uh, with them you will get the effect you desire. If you liked this short video, subscribe to the channel, press like and share the video so others can know our channel. See you in the next video.